Hello and welcome to my lecture section 2.2. It's about Earth Resource Satellite Programs. There are many satellite programs uh, these days launched for different purposes by uh, different countries. So the first and the longest running satellite program is uh, Landsat Satellite Program. Landsat program is a series of Earth observing satellite missions jointly managed by NASA and United States Geological Survey, USGS. So the, there are many satellites archived in the, in the USGS website, in the NASA websites, which are available free of charge for academic and research purposes. So the satellites, uh, the Landsat satellites have been operating since 1972, providing continuous global record of the Earth's land uh, surface. So this is the longest uh, running program. So you can find a satellite data since 1972. So you can do some kind of change detection analysis. Uh, about forest change detection analysis, about uh, uh, agricultural expansion, wetland expansion and shrinkage since 1972. So they started launching this data since 1972, Landsat 1, Landsat 2, Landsat 3, 4, 5, 6. They, they were not successful in launching Landsat 6. It was... Uh, uh, you know, Landsat 6 failed after, you know, I mean, due to some kind of uh, technical problems. So Landsat 6 was not successful. But after that, Landsat 7 was launched since 1999. Still, it is operational. It is running. So, but in Landsat 7, there is, uh, since 2003, uh, there was uh, some kind of problem in scan line corrector. So the data that is obtained from Landsat 7 is SLC of data since 2003. But from 1999 up to 2003, the data is pure quality. But after 2003, Landsat 7 ETM plus sensor is providing data with SLC off. So there are many gaps in the data. So if you want to use this Landsat 7 data, you are required to fill the gap before you use it for uh, research purpose. And after that, the most successful satellite program is Landsat 8 since 2013. Still it is running and it is providing good quality data. We can use this data for research purpose. So, but the program is the same. It is Landsat program with different quality. You know, from, tom from time to time, they have been increasing the quality of the satellite data that they are providing. But after, I mean, uh, after Landsat 8, they are planning to launch Landsat 9. They uh, are not, uh, you know, able to launch Landsat 9 by 2020. Maybe probably because of Corona pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, they have postponed launching Landsat 9 to, to, to 2021. So with regard to the quality or the type of sensor, the type of bandwidth, the type of the spatial resolution in each Landsat, uh, series is as shown in this table. In the first uh, Landsat program, they were maybe there were three bands with very coarse bandwidth, with coarse spatial resolution. But after a while, they were you know successful in creating Landsat three with one, uh, two, three, four, five, six bands. As you can see, band six is a thermal band. It is of, uh, you know, higher or very low spatial resolution. 
But in Landsat 4 and 5, they managed to reduce or to increase the spatial resolution of the thermal band into 120. But as you can see, the TM sensor, they introduced a new sensor called thematic mapper sensor in Landsat 4 and Landsat 5. This is an advancement over multispectral scanner sensor in Landsat 4 and 5. So this is uh, a very good uh, quality satellite imagery. This satellite imagery has uh, got uh, high spectral resolution and high spatial resolution. But in Landsat 7, they changed the sensor into enhanced thematic mapper plus sensor with improved spectral resolution as well as improved spatial resolution. As you can see, the thermal band, band 6, has now higher spatial resolution into 60 meter from 120 meter. And the panchromatic band is additional band. Now the ATM plus sensor is providing with eight bands with one panchromatic band, 15 meter spatial resolution. So this is uh, an advancement. And the latest satellite program is Landsat 8 program. It was launched since in, in, in February 11, 2013. And it consists of two sensors, operational land imager and thermal uh, infrared remote sensor, uh, thermal infrared sensors. So the OLI spectral uh, bands include nine bands. These are two bands additional, band one and band nine. So in previous Landsat programs, these two bands are not there. Band one and band nine were not you know, involved. So these are two additional bands, as well as band 11 is additional. So there are three additional bands in comparison with Landsat 7. OK? And there is, this, there is additional, or there is a new satellite program different from the Landsat series. This satellite program is managed by France in partnership with Belgium and Sweden. OK? So this European country were also successful in launching this satellite program in 1972. I think uh, the US people managed to launch Landsat program since 1972, but the European countries such as France, Belgium, and Sweden managed to launch after probably six years in 1978. And the good thing about SPOT is SPOT imagery to have a stereo viewing capability. So if you have stereo pairs of SPOT imagery of the same area, you can develop a three-dimensional uh, image so that you can extract terrain characteristics. So in the spatial resolution is much better than the the Landsat uh, image, as you can see, it is. It starts from 10 meter, and now they are providing data with 1.5 meter with high spatial resolution. This is meant for urban application, and the revisit time is much better. This is a temporal resolution. Every one day, Spot can provide you data of good quality, as compared to Landsat. Landsat is providing uh, with a temporal resolution of 16 days. So. In terms of spatial resolution as well as temporal resolution, spot imagery is better than Landsat. And this is another satellite program managed by European Space Agency. It is Copernicus program. It is Sentinel family satellite program. We call it a family because in one satellite program they managed to launch, you know, six satellites with different purposes. Satellite 1 has a radar imaging mission. Satellite 2, Sentinel-2, has multi-spectral high-resolution imaging mission. 3 has uh, sea surface topography, sea surface temperature, ocean color, and land color mission. 4 and 5, atmospheric monitoring. 6, global sea surface height measuring mission. So you can launch a satellite uh, with different mission. So for the first time in history, this satellite program 
showed us the possibility of, you know, launching different satellites in the same program, in the same mission. So most people usually use Sentinel-2 since it is a multispectral and commonly applied for research purposes. So if you see the spectral characteristics of Sentinel-2, which is the optical sensor, the optical, uh, as, I, as I showed you, multispectral high resolution image machine is Sentinel-2. So when we look at the pan characteristics of Sentinel-2, we will find there are 12 bands of Sentinel-2 with different resolution. Most of the researchers usually apply band 2, band 3, band 4, and band 8 because they have got higher spatial resolution, 10 meters. So this is much better than Landsat because Landsat has uh, 30 meters spatial resolution with the same uh, wavelengths band. So this time around, you can develop NDVI data or normalized difference vegetation index data with 10 meter spatial resolution thanks to Sentinel-2. So it is also possible to see the different crop pattern and also the urban expansion as well as this is the pivotal irrigation system going on in Saudi Arabia region. So you can calculate the area of the farm, the area of the plot, you can estimate the yield, the production system, and the like. You can also uh, use this Sentinel data for wise water use in this irrigation system areas, okay? Another important uh, satellite uh, image is Terra and Aqua MODIS satellite programs. These are the two satellites within MODIS satellite program, okay? This MODIS satellite has got an advantage of high temporal resolution. Every one or two days, you can have a MODIS data. And another important aspect of MODIS is it has high spectral resolution. It has 36 spectral bands, okay? In terms of spectral resolution, this is much better. But in terms of spatial resolution, this imagery is with 250 meters bands. Only two of the bands are with 250, and there are also four bands with 500 meters spatial resolution, and the majority of the bands are with one kilometer resolution. So in terms of spatial resolution, MODIS is quite poor, okay? But still, the applicability is significant, okay? It doesn't matter if the spatial resolution is very poor, but we can use the advantage of having good spectral resolution and good temporal resolution of Terra and Aqua MODIS images, such as we can monitor the fire location using MODIS data, since we can have every 10 days we can have this data, okay? The location of the fire, the red point is, indicates the location of the fire. After 10 days, again 10 days, again 10 days, the fire is progressing toward the sun location. And also we can use MODIS for knowing the location of drought, okay? Whether the season, the year is good or bad. For example, in 2016 and 2018, there was a very bad growing season. You know, the whole part of Ethiopia was very poor, unless or except some very uh, exceptional localities such as Borana and uh, Somali uh, areas, okay? So you can use this to develop an enhanced vegetation index anomaly or for drought detection, okay? What are those satellite images with high spatial resolution? There are a number of satellites, but... To mention some, there are GOI-1, Worldview-1, Worldview-2, Worldview-3, 4, Play-1, SkySat, and so forth. There are a number of high-resolution satellite imagery, but this is the, 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 the table that shows you 
which image is much better and which ones are commercial. Most of the high resolution imageries are commercial. So it's, I mean, they limit the, uh, the, the applicability of these imageries for most uh, researchers. So you can see, if you see GOI-1, it has four multispectral bands, one panchromatic. The resolution of multispectral bands is two meter. And if you see World View 1, it is purely panchromatic. It's black and white imagery, but the spatial resolution is 0.5 meter. Okay? It's, it has its own application. So World View 2 has nine bands, eight multispectral and one panchromatic. The multispectral ones are two meter resolution. And World View 4 with improved version 1.24 multispectral resolution, which is much better. If you see SkySat, it has five band multispectral ones with 0.72 resolution. For, so for the first time in history, it was possible to have a, a, a less than one meter multispectral high resolution imagery. So thanks to SkySat. So it is a daily data. The temporal frequency, the temporal resolution is much better than any other satellites as well. So it is daily data. And also the spatial resolution is less than one meter. It is 72 centimeter resolution. So if you, if you would like to know more about the high resolution satellite uh, imageries as well as the low resolution, the moderate resolution, you can go to this link and know more about it. Another question that we can ask when we learn about satellite imagery is where to download free satellite images. So I have prepared a table, the, the name of the web page, the type of imagery that you can get, and the important features of each of the web page and the link of the website that you can directly go and download free of charge. USGS Earth Explorer, Land Viewer, Copernicus Open Access Hub, Sentinel Hub, NASA's Earth Data Search, and Remote Pixel are with different features. They do have their own link, and you can download and explore the, uh, their uh, resources. Most of the time, we use Land Viewer, Earth Explorer, and Remote Pixels. The advantage of Remote Pixel is it doesn't require you to have a login account, and also it, you, you can use web-based pass and row for Landsat uh, satellite imagery to, uh, to download. So this has it. So each of the websites do have its own, their own advantage and disadvantages. So thank you very much. Coming up next is lecture three about digital image processing and uh, analysis.